I'm going to call this um, Utilities Committee uh, to order. Um, so I stand for the pledge. Mike, would you like to start there? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, would you uh, give us a roll call? Walbert. Here. Hancock. Here. Barto. Here. All right. Uh, all right, Chris. Um, looks like we got a full, full uh, plate in front of us here. Let's start with number four, unmetered sewer rate. All right. I this is a continuation point. from the last utility meeting. Yes, sir, it is. So uh, the top thing in your package, two sheets, stapled together. Uh, what, I, what I did was I went through the history of rate increases from 2009 until this year's 2022 um, also went through and calculated when the CIP fee for sewer started and put together this spreadsheet so what you can see in the top row is what the rates the consumption rates are for each of the years uh, and then below that is what the flat rate at 7,000 gallons which is what was established for the Oaks what that amount would be for each year. Um, then the, the column below that is the difference between what those rates should have been at 7,000 gallons and what the customers were paying in the Oaks. So you can see that in 2012, when the first rate increase came in, they, they saved 525 a month, and then it goes up from there. Okay, can I hold this? Absolutely. Can you, um, I can't remember, were you, far, were you here for this one? Okay, I just wanna make sure. So we yeah. didn't have any questions. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Okay, so uh, then below that, you've got two lines that are that are kind of bunched together. Those are both the CIP fees. So the CIP per thousand gallons, that first column just lets you know when that fee started, uh, which was in 2012 for the sewer side, and it was three bucks per thousand. Uh, and then below that, you can see that if we're basing it on 7,000 gallons, they would have paid a $21 CIP fee for each month. Um, so the column below that total monthly savings is the difference between the rates that they paid and what the rates everybody else paid, plus the CIP fee that the residents of Oaks did not pay, and that shows you uh, their monthly savings per uh, per tax, basically. Mm -hmm. Below that is those numbers times 12 to give you the annual savings, and the very bottom is the grand total of just under 5,300 bucks per um, resident that they um, did not have to pay because of because of this oversight. So, so that was kind of the breakdown of all of those numbers, which I think will be very helpful when we take this to the residents to at least explain to them, this is how much money you um, you didn't have to pay because of this, this thing. Uh, the, the second page that's stapled together is where at the last meeting we talked about the average of 7,000 gallons probably being a little bit high. Uh, so what we did was we had Danielle run a report. Uh, we took, real simple, took the number of accounts the number of gallons that were billed and divided them uh, and got the averages. So in the winter months, uh, we average around 3.6 there. And in the summer months, it's around 4.7. So I still feel like dropping the 7,000 flat rate to a 5,000 flat rate is um, appropriate and does not, it's not exorbitant and does not put us in a situation where we're gonna uh, miss out on what would be reasonable. So those columns below that, you can see what the, um, at 7,000, what the monthly rates are, these are current as of right now. So if we went for 7,000, it would be an $83 bill. If we go down to 5,000, it would be a $59 bill once you add in the CIP fees. So uh, just basically a bunch of numbers for more information there. Um, I think what, what we had discussed at this point was maybe starting to come up with a plan for a meeting to uh, break this to the residents at the Oaks um, and inviting them to come in here and, and, and voice their uh, opinion. So I, I'm completely open to any type of scheduling. Well, that would, that so would be Chris, so yeah. um, this is a unit, this, they, they are paying a uniform rate, a flat rate, if you will, correct? Yes. No matter how much they use or don't use. Correct. So if they're snowbirds and they go to Florida for the winter or whatever, so, and so I'm trying to think about how many homes are up in there. It's probably about 50. We have about 30 accounts. 30? 30 okay, accounts. I guess those are pretty big lots. I guess I'm 
that this applies to. There are there's probably about ten accounts that were before the sewer went in, and they have meters in their well line. Okay, so this isn't everybody one, right? This is right. This these are the ones okay. that um, got added to the okay. sewer project that don't have water. So we're talking about, about thirty accounts yes, at five thousand an account. So we're talking about a hundred and we're gonna do math and call this one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, you know, this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this this was the city not billing properly. Correct. From 2009 when the flat rate was created to the next rate increase of 2012 when that ordinance was amended, the flat rate never made it back over. And so when we did our flat, when we did our rate increases um, in 2012, 2012 is when it happened. When right. we looked at it in 2018 for the right. most recent set, we used the ordinance that were codified right. in the book and it wasn't there either. So this is all the city's Agreed. Yes, sir. And that has nothing to do with the residents. I'm going to have a hard time supporting going back and making that. Why don't, I, I, not, I, I do not think that I agree with you, sir. I okay. do not think we should do we're that. Going, this is about going forward, Todd. I think that number is just to, to explain to the residents what happened. Yeah, not to try is, and recoup it. Yeah, and that, uh, excuse me, Todd, that, that this is just a um, an example of what they haven't paid, and we're not asking them to come in and pay anything. Okay. Um, just Agreed. This was basically justification to say, okay, Going forward, we have some choices. We're going to update our flat rate to include you, okay. and and so forth. Yes. Can, and I think there's two other things I wanted to point out, mm -hmm. Tom. Unless you had another point to that. I just so, well, um, so so any 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 public meeting is going to be is going to be explained to the to, to the Oaks residents at some point. X. You're going to have to start paying correct. more, and that's 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 page two, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And okay. and the two comparisons is if we didn't readjust the amount and just applied, kept the billing in for seven thousand and just applied the rate increases, okay. or if we made it more, what I consider to be more appropriate, the five thousand gallon number instead okay. of ten. Yeah, I mean that's not a neighborhood that has, I think, a lot of well, those those are big houses, but. I don't see that as a neighborhood with a lot of kids or families. It's a lot of older folks Agreed. who I think are maybe empty nesters. I mean, that's just my perception of that going through there. I don't see I think that's very playing, accurate. so I don't think they're using a, a ton of, right. unless they've got their, you know, their adult kids, they've come back to live with them or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, Which I, does I, happen. I, I know. I, 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 I don't know. But um, so their their rate would go from what they're paying right now. It's uh, thirty three twenty five right now. And, and okay. I would recommend they go to the five thousand. So it'd be fifty nine sixty is what it would give us. It's going about it's going to double. Hmm. Yeah, it's so just a little bit less. About, but yeah, about yeah, 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 forty percent. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then Could I I understand. I I, I was. I remember our previous discussions a few weeks yeah. ago, and, and I, it, I guess it ran in my mind. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Walter. I, I thought we were going to this. I think we assess them in some fashion. Yeah. No, we no, we asked Chris agree. just to come up with okay. okay what what has okay. what has a, has transpired? Can, um, okay. Just two questions on here, and I want to I want to first understand the first line here where you have your winter and summer. Um, yes. To me, that equates to about a 4,100 gallon average between your winter and summer months. So it does. It does. Okay. I think the important thing to remember is the summer number is an average. So in July and August, they, they use a lot more than, than 4.7. Mm -hmm. uh, and same with and the converse is the winter months is an average too. So you have to have less than, than some it, numbers. That's too. true. That's true. But I think we would want to make sure that the city is not um, cutting ourselves short. Can we can we provide an option to them that like unlike or not unlike some of their other residents in there that have a meter within their well, could we not have they could have an option? Either they pay a flat rate, or they pay for a meter to be installed, and they can be metered. Exactly. So I think we talked about a little bit yeah, about that last did. time, and one of the things that we were spitballing around was maybe giving people because meters are hard to find right now. So maybe giving people a six month window and saying if you want to sign up, saying that at the end of this six months you'll have it ready for a meter, we can keep you at the existing rate until we're able to provide the meter to right. you and stuff like that. But I, Personally, I would prefer the meter being installed in the well lines because it's just accurate. To Todd's point, 
you may have snowbirds. And they could hit the minimum and, bill. And they could hit the minimum Absolutely. bill, and you could have adult children um, moving home who could exceed the, the, the that 5,000. So I, as long as we give them that option, I think that, that justifies um, doing either direction. Agreed, agreed. I, I'm just curious about the committee's um, opinion of keeping them at the existing rate for that six-month window while we're unable to, to get meters. Um, I have no problem with that. I think it's actually pretty fair. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we, if we can't, if they want a meter and we can't meet them, right. I mean, I think we try to. Agreed. Yep, yeah, I, I would agree with that also. And the meter, uh, to be clear, as with any citizen, they would pay for the meter. Correct, sir. It's the, it's the $500 fee for the meter that comes the meter and the radio lead unit, um, the installation of it. If they would have to prepare their plumbing to receive it, uh, we would come out and do the installation and give them the, the equipment for $500. So the choice would be install a meter or pay the up the upgraded or the um, revised flat fee at 5,000 gallons, an average of 5,000 gallons yes, sir. a month. Yes, sir. Those would be the two options that, that I, I think are very reasonable we could present to the citizens and, okay. and kind of go from there. So I, I would agree with that. Do you need anything from us uh, to move forward um, with this? Just, just wanted to spitball. Maybe we don't have to pick an exact date, but maybe a month from when we were thinking about taking this to uh, having the public meeting for those residents to come in. I'm, ki I'm kind of thinking the end of the summer, like the October time frame, September, October, something like that. I, I think the charts that you put together, minus the seven thousand. Right. One, I don't really want to point that out to them. Right. Necessarily. Right. But I think the charts that you put together are great to have on a, well, however Absolutely. we want to present. Yeah. And yeah. that pretty much explains it. And then give them the choice. And yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And think that, that I think the majority of them are going to are gonna appreciate that they've saved some money. Right. Um, but now they, they're going well, to pay what everybody else is paying. In that circumstance, perhaps we do something like um, maybe we have the meeting at the end of July, beginning of August. And then we're looking at once we give them, once we establish that and we set up the six month window, by the time that all happens, maybe we're looking at March for the deadline. Um, and that lets the, the, this budget year finish and hopefully the meters can start getting restocked by then. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't think this is, this isn't certainly putting us in the poorhouse. So okay, absolutely. I think, right. I think that would be great. And I think it'd be gracious of the city in, in essence. It's our, as Todd pointed out, this isn't, this is our fault, not theirs. They didn't Correct. do anything. To, to cause this. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to the committee. We'll have another meeting by then, I'm sure. But I'm, I'll shoot for the beginning of August. Maybe we'll yeah. try and yeah, set up. Yeah, I, I would make sure you get, you put, you send a, I, I would suggest you send a, a, a direct, ma a direct mail Agreed. to each, to each resident. Agreed. Uh, we'll, we'll send a letter residents. to all 30 of them. Right. And, and how many this are. is what we're going to do. And this yeah. is when they're going to have this meeting, prominently displayed meeting. It's going to be, I believe they have it here. We have the police station. Agreed. So I would suggest maybe, maybe talk to the chief. Maybe go to the police station. Might be a better spot to, to, to yeah, get more people in there. Yeah, some of the HOAs are, are doing their, their meetings at the police station. There's, there's tons of room over there. Yeah, there's, you there's can throw the, those big charts up on the screen. He's got, the, he's got it's a little more technology over there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we don't interfere with. We don't have to worry about interfering with some other meeting that may be going on here, planning and zoning. Or, that's, so that's the chief's free, very though. good about scheduling meetings over there. That's a, that's so a really good point. That's, well, they know. I don't it's true. It's a very good point. They want shelter station. That's that's why. That's what's one of the reasons we built it the way we built it. Oh yeah, oh, I, so I definitely think for public public meetings, not just it's not exclusive to the police department. Yes, sir. I, I don't think it'd be a problem to keep it all. No, I think you're right. He'll he'll with right about yeah, it. no, he'll he'll get to take care of. So, excellent. Um, all righty. That, yeah, that's that's all I have, Mr. Walter, on that. All right, let's go on to the. Uh, uh, capacity issues that we talked about a little bit. You breached this or broached it a little bit last week. Yeah, so that brings us to the, the colorful map that's in your packet. Um, <laughs> so let me explain. So, well, the green area is the service territory that TAS was responsible for. It. And so as you can see the Headley Mills corridor is where we anticipate any development coming. Um, so what we have are two that's options. That's a good one. I did not label yeah, it, Mr. Barco. Did not pay attention. That is a lesson you taught me before. I got it right once, but I missed it. Uh, north is at the top of the page. Um, so <laughs> but the, um, the AKA, way, <laughs> AKA the other one. The, uh, your other right. The, uh, the, the red other circle right should be towards the southern end of the map. But Broad, <laughs> Broad Street goes from the low part of the page to the high part well, of the I page. I figured that part out, Andrew. <laughs> 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 so, the, <laughs> so I um, I do have a uh, preliminary meeting with Verdant. 
Grant is on Thursday, and we're going to discuss some of the you know 100,000 foot views, trying to get some pricing together. The two options that I think we are going to look at is either expanding the plant where it exists now, or the option of creating a, a second plant that is halfway between our existing service territory and the future um, Denny Mills corridor, what could be developed. Uh, so the, the red circle is where the plant is now. Uh, with that upgrade, eventually we would, need a, we would need a new trunk line to get from the Hedley Mills corridor to the new Creek Road lift station. Without a new trunk line, we're trying to find the end of a subdivision somewhere and cram everything into an existing eight inch line and everything's a bunch of bottlenecks. Um, so the, the good news is down Township Road, we don't have a main sewer trunk line right there. Everything comes from the side. Uh, so that would be a pretty straight shot to grab things around Hedley Mills Tower and run a new trunk line to Creek Road Lift Station. Um, the purple diagram, the purple star, is a possible pump station. So if we put a pump station in there, Heron Manor, the settlement, and the Oak Meadow Drive area with uh, BC and Pat Haven, all of that, it all drains, as, as well as the Oak Sewer, they all drain to one manhole that is in the river of the golf course, right there at the bridge, uh, 310 and Broad, uh, and then it comes under Broad Street. If you could grab the sewer right there with a pump station and run a force main up to somewhere in the vicinity of this purple circle, this is extremely preliminary. Um, no conversations have been had, but if you could pump it up there somewhere and put a new plant. And what that would do is alleviate uh, about 15, 20% of what's coming to the plant now which would give you room to grow in the southern area of our service territory. And then we would build a new plant that would be expandable. Uh, you build it, but you could wall off a tank, make it smaller, and just service what that pump station would take to it until development came and then you'd be ready for the development there. Uh, so those are the two options that we're going to try and get a rough price for and you know come back with a better so the purple circle, that's right off Headley. It looks like that's right off Headley's Mill. It, right? The area of Headley's Mill, the Macintosh, is kind of a okay. low point with the creek right there yep. for a discharge okay. point. So somewhere in that okay. area, if we could find an ideal spot okay. Um, okay. to purchase land, would be the second. Well, there's there's land available up there. I mean, there's 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 oh, there's you know it's I don't know. I mean, I'm, I say available. I mean, it's not developed. Agreed. It's available, Agreed. maybe it's maybe not. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. There is there is land up there if if you know if everything would work out that could happen. So the the plus size to the purple thing the you do have a pump station and a force main, but force mains are cheap and easy to put in relatively, as opposed to that big red line. That's a it's going to be a big sewer and it's going to be deep um, to receive everything on that email. That's that's going to be expensive. So the the red circle is cheaper. The red line is expensive. The purple circle circle is expensive. The purple line is much cheaper. So in the in the end. I, I don't know where the numbers are going to land, but that's just a rough estimate of what we're going to look And it, does it make any sense to flip your purple line to have a pump station that pumps down to an expanded current plant? So we, we, could, we could do that as well. Um, yes. Okay. We could, yes. We could put the purple star at the top of the red line, turn that red line into a force main. Flip it. That is our third option. That is a nice little point. Be a big force main, but it'd be cheaper than still putting in a trunk line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a problem. And if you've got right away to deal with, and you don't have to, you don't have to build a big plant and lagoon and so forth. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, that meeting happens on Thursday where we get those. We'll, we'll have them start looking at the cost for that kind of thing, um, and try and try and move from there. The the one thing that I did want to bring up uh, just real quick was. We're, we're definitely looking at funding sources for this. Um, we need to move quickly, obviously, because we've talked about the plant being at capacity and the EPA getting anxious about issuing PTY, PTIs moving forward. Um, so one of the things that we looked at is possibly residential tips that would be able to cover the note of a loan that would need to come out for, for this type of project. So, so we're, we're working it with the administration to try and find a way to fund this with minimal impact on the uh, existing funds um, the best that we can. Did, did you not say that you thought you were 24 months away from being at capacity? Isn't that what we heard the last meeting? So I thought we were, so they, no, they, they said three, they were going to give us three residential PTIs, but they would not say how big. And so like Harry Manor 4, which is 20 houses, 
got a BPI approved, but but they won't not to, tell not me to drop in the that, small bucket. Exactly. So they won't tell me if that counts as one. It should not. It it should be minimal. I understand. But but it, you know. And we're also doing some stuff that's going to help with infiltration, which exactly. will actually expand our facet. Exactly. Right. So actually, I'll tie in. I'm I'm just going to go ahead and yep. jump up to number go, eight, which has no documents. Eight. But yep. uh, the inspection that happens on Wednesday with the EPA, they they do them almost always annually. We haven't had one in a while because of COVID. So that's what this is. But the one of the things she wants to talk about is the capacity issue. Uh, and that's where I'm going to tell her about the I and I uh, program that we're going to do this year, trying to line the sewers, and hopefully that will give us some more capacity, because the I and I is our problem. On on dry weather months, we're at 750,000 out of 1.1 million. And Wet weather months, we can be at 1 million. Right? So that's what they should be looking at. I agree, sir. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yes. All right. Perfect. Um, and that's all I have on the capacity. Okay, do you want to go ahead to your uh, two-inch water line, your proposal that we have on the agenda for tonight? Yes, sir. This is a resolution on the consent agenda. Uh, this is for Verdantis to do the inspection of the next uh, water line project that we have. Uh, they've given us an hourly not to exceed of $36,000. Uh, that is 10% of the construction, which is $360,000. So a little bit higher than we usually shoot for. We like somewhere around eight for inspection. Uh, but. I think it's worth pointing out that the reason we got a $360,000 construction bid is because it was law and they've already mobilized. So I still feel like we're, we're in that 8% uh, window. We have worked with Fernandez before for inspection at the wastewater plant. Uh, they, they did a, a pretty good job for us there. Uh, we did use the, it is below 50, so we used the citywide RFQ that we put out at the beginning of this year um, to select the firms and rank them and then got this proposal from Fernandez. Committee, do you have any questions? No. I, don't even, I don't have any questions. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we'll move on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Moving on to item number seven. As you'll remember, the EPA with their new lead and copper rule. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. They're requiring us to do an inventory of our unknown certified materials. So they, they did put out a grant for up to $50,000 for this inventory, these inventory actions. Uh, so I applied for the grant and we did get uh, awarded the full $50,000. So we will use that money uh, in the upcoming year to basically hydro excavate the curb boxes in Old Town. Now the neighborhoods, the newer stuff, we have material specifications, we have plans that identify the lines as either plastic or copper. So, so that's pretty easy, but in Old Town we do not. Um, I have not come across lead service lines, but this will verify to the EPA and meet the requirements of it. Uh, so there is, because we didn't know about this grant or the requirement, uh, there is an amendment to the supplemental that would account for this $50,000 grant. Uh, so that, that will be on the agenda for the next one. Okay. Any questions? Um, Chris, do you have any reason to believe that this will exceed that $50,000? The $50,000 will not do all of Old Town. Will not. So, no, what sir. do you feel the final number will be? Um, I think so. When I talked to FECOR and we gave them the the number of services we're talking about, they estimated eighty five to ninety. Um, so, the inventory doesn't need to be done until twenty four. So they they put this grant money out, and I think we can do fifty, and then I'll budget for trying to figure the rest out in twenty three and twenty four, and then hope that they do another round of funding to accommodate that. If, do you think not, this will get somewhere around 50 to 60 percent of what I, yes, inventory we have? Okay. Yeah. So we'll just start on one end of Old Town and just start, you know, walking down the streets until we run out of money and then okay. try and budget yeah. for the rest of it. So. Great. All righty. Let's go down to our favorite, my favorite uh, discussion, Strontium. So the, strontium <laughs> so the Strontium I just wanted to bring up real quick. Um, OU did reach back out to me and put me in contact with two of their research professors. Uh, the one has not responded to my e email. The second one was out of the country on vacation and did respond to me from overseas. Uh, she should be back this week, so I'm expecting to hear from her where we can sit down and they can discuss if, if they think there's, you know, if they can help us out with, with trying to do this research. What we have come up with in the meantime, uh, there is a red a peristaltic pump uh, at the plant that is down. That pump can be used, right now we gravity from the brine waste tank where we put our, our dilution water 
to the stream to the discharge point. You can use this pump to, to disperse that instead of gravity. Um, the benefit will be the pump will allow us to increase the level in that tank by two feet, letting us put a lot more dilution water in there. Right now, we have to manually go in and pull a pipe out of the drain hole because it wasn't built to operate like this. We have to pull a pipe out, and our people are not tall enough to go higher than four feet of dilution water. So once we get the pump fixed and Or find back, someone tall. You <laughs> could find someone tall. I, I, I don't know who we would... Uh, we would need a six-and-a-half-footer. Huh? Um, maybe... Patrick Carnes from Strand is about yeah, to go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you, you could probably pull it off in the same time. I think you might have to lean your head back a little bit. No, but, my son's good. but so once the pump comes back up, our plan is to increase two feet and see if the extra dilution water helps, as well as the research and um, trying to trying to come up with solutions here. So I've done a little research on this, and you know, finding that <clears throat> some of this water is coming out of oil, oil and um, other types of mining operations. I don't think we have any of that around here, but potentially some of these uh, localized wells that are pumping could add that strontium into the groundwater that you're seeing. That's one way. That is. Um, there's another uh, potential from, um, from some of the fertilizers and some of the ag products. Okay. So I think I that you could that. look into that also. I know you don't have rhyme or reason to rain, not rain, but if it was a, an applied substance on the fields, that would give you the delay that would sort of make it strange when it happened and when it didn't happen. Agreed. Um, Agreed. So uh, also reached out to Ohio Northern. Um, the person, so I reached out to the board, the advisory board at Ohio Northern to find out who the professors would be to do this. They gave me a lady who is on the board who is the director of the Canton uh, water treatment plants. She manages all the Canton plants. Okay. She's looking into this because she believes they've seen this up in Canton. Perfect. So wow. hopefully, Perfect. maybe they can give back some some. Um, and I said, look, you know, we're we're happy to you know to sponsor somebody to do yeah. some research and make this a win win. Right. And you know, as long as we can get this this figured out, um, it certainly would be something good for us, good for the Ohio EPA, and good for a university of choice. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's very exciting. I'm 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 really glad to hear that. Um, I had not heard about the fertilizer thing, and you're right because it's in the ground and the slow release. It might explain to it because we do test the raw and it doesn't change. It stays yep. pretty consistent. But if it's in, I'll in get the you ground, the I'll get you the reviews. I didn't bring it tonight, but I'll get you the stuff I was reading. I've well, got be, a stack of stuff. That yeah, that'd be great. Uh, the the mining stuff I had heard of, and it does naturally occur as well. Um, but, yes, it does. But yeah, and that's where the mining and the um, bringing it up out of um, the deeper areas into a twenty-five foot or fifty-foot strata of water mm -hmm. that you're probably seeing infiltrate on occasion mm -hmm. um, when the drawdown's big enough. So yeah. 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 yeah, I didn't go and look to see what wells possibly are within the influence of the well field, um, but that would be my next step. Yeah. Yep. No, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. So. I, I appreciate the assistance, and um, you know it's uh, it's perplexing, but we're not giving up. So we'll, we'll definitely keep going with it. Okay. So I do have one other, Mr. Walker. If you have another other? Yep. Yeah, have, have one. Just you have, one. You just have one number other. Ten. I have, a, I have a, a number ten. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> um, also on the agenda tonight, on the on the consent agenda, is a resolution for the driveway for the bulk water sales uh, station. And so I wanted to explain how we were going to pay for that a little bit because it is going to move some money around out of the existing budget. Uh, there is no action that needs to come from council because all of these projects I'm about to talk about are in this, they come from the same account, but it's not exactly what we said to council when we made the budget, so I wanted to make sure everybody's aware and didn't have any objections. Um, it's a $31,000 price tag to get the, the driveway built, and that's all the way to asphalt. That's not sand gravel, so it'd be fully completed. We have 15000 left in our budget for the equipment itself, so I can get fifteen there. And then I was going to pull 16. We o we over budgeted on that two inch water line project. The, the numbers came in really well for us. So I was going to pull 16,000 out of the excess of that project and finish off the driveway with it. That will leave us $36,000 for that two inch water line project that is untouched. That's after CA, after the Vedantis CI contract and the construction contract, which has its own contingency in there. So. We're not, we're not really cutting it close um, for anything unless there's something catastrophic, um, but that, that's kind of what I'd like to do to pay for the driveway. Okay. 
Do you need, uh, again, anything from us on that? Um, I, I just, we, we usually, we could always take a recommendation, but this is on the consent agenda. It's quite possible that it could be gone by the time you give your report, but um, any recommendations that Well, that I think hurt? it's worthwhile to say that, you know, through this management of the funds, you still have excess money in the yes. two-inch line, and you're getting a drive, you're getting a, a paving now. Can I ask on the driveway yes. part because we're dealing with water trucks? Yes. Are this a is this a heavy duty design? Yes, sir. It is. Vernantis designed this um, to be it was I think I believe it holds six um, full size water hauling trucks, not not the semis, but full size trucks, and they designed it for that. I'm talking about the profile, the section, rather than the the, the length and width. Um, the profile. Yes. Heavy yes, duty from the, from the aggregate all the way up. Yep. Yes, they designed it with that in mind. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm good. That's great. And that's not too expensive, really. That's a residential driveway cost. It's, it's, it's not too bad. Again, um, we would go with Law, who has all of his equipment mobilized, and we'll be paving Jefferson Street, and that'll be the time when he delivers. So, you, so, so, so your mobilization, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, okay. Um, I'm happy to, to hear a, um, um, a, a motion to... Uh, yeah, yes, that'd be great. A motion from the committee to so support. I move that we uh, that we recommend the the moving of the funds as uh, Mr. Sharrock described to uh, pave the uh, driveway for the bulk water truck. I'll second that. Walter. Yes. Ann Sharp. Yes. Yes. We we may not have to actually, as you yeah. said, it's in the consent agenda, so it no, may it may be a moot point. It can't hurt anything, though. Well, it can't hurt yeah. anything. Okay. Well, I have. Well, does the committee have any other others? All right, I have two other others. Okay. Um, my first other other is. At the firehouse, the Jefferson Street project. Yes. Um, understand that there are two culverts that the firehouse is, has obligated to reimburse us to adjust. Uh, apparently, they're low, and they're they they were spoken about at the Jefferson Street and Jefferson Street pro during the Jefferson Street project. So the two culverts that are in the fire station, I know that they were trying to sync up their paving, but the. Um the culverts themselves were not talked about as part of this project. Um, the elevations of them or, or changing them or having our contractors change them being reimbursed, this is the first time we're hearing Would that. you mind I'm checking sure. with Alan? Because the fire department believes that they were talked about and that they were going to be handled through this project, but they were, they're were 100% paying for them. So it, it, it is possible that it went, that it went through Alan because you know, stormwater would have been his side of things. So I will definitely check. Well, my, my concern is that you're obviously managing and, and directing this project, and Alan may be having some outside influences, asking him to do a couple things, and that you guys may not be able to. Yeah, we, we have we have been working together quite quite well with this, but it's always possible that something slips through. So I will check with Alan just to make sure. My recollection was is probably the same as Chris's uh, that I remember them asking, when you pave Jefferson Street, we'd like to have it coincide. We'd like to have, have it. Together, I don't. I, I also don't recall uh, the, the the structures, the storm structures being raised. And if uh, if Mr. Haynes did not have that conversation with him, I will reach out to the fire department and explain to them that that is not part of this project, and we'd like to put in the like try and get the bottom of, of what the miscommunication may have been. So. The the firehouse definitely believes that they have made communication to to do this, and they're just wanting to make sure that. Um, that we make sure that it gets done, I guess. Yeah, I will uh, and they're happy will to pay not for let it. that sit on my desk. That will happen tomorrow. Okay. And I've got one other other question. Um, the um, uh, At the pool, um, Beachwood Trails. Beachwood Trails. Yes. Are, obviously, we service that pool with yes. our water. Yes, we do. Um, have we made any kind of deal with them that we are supplying them water free of charge for anything? So the previous director did have a deal uh, like that in place, from my understanding. Uh, that deal lasted for 10 years, and I cut it off. We're not doing that anymore. Um, we will fill the pool from a hydrant because they only have a three-quarter inch line, and it would take forever. Uh, but we bill them the full amount of the pool. This do is we, the first Do we put year. a meter on the hydrant? And, and we do it by volume. Okay, but so we know it's so volume. So we know, but it's 150,000 gallons. Yes. Okay. Yep. So That's we do fine. it by volume. But it was we did do it last year. So when we when I found out that that was the practice, I told them we'd give them one more year so they could adjust, and then that was the end of that. Uh, but that year fell during COVID. They didn't even open. So we gave them last year as that last year. And this is the first year they're getting the bill. And that will be that way moving forward. When you bill them for that, you're not billing them sanitary, correct? No, you're sir. just billing them for water. It is simply water. Yes, and, and are we, 
I guess, are we charging them the full amount of out-of-town rate that yes, we normally is. would, or are we just charging them the cost of water? No, so we're billing them like they are a customer, just like it went through their meeting. So do they have any idea what that bill, have they been notified what we believe that, well, we know yeah, what that bill so They have definitely been in contact with Daniel. I don't know if they've asked what it's going to be, but we have told them we're billing you at the, at the regular rate, uh, and it already happened. So they um, they went ahead and moved forward with filling the pool. It happened uh, last week. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. they are going to get a rather large bill. Okay, I just want to know if they were prepared for it, that's they, all. Yeah, they knew they were going to pay for it. Um, well, they had two years warning, because last year when they called and said, I know we got to pay for it, we, I said, well, that's not fair. I told you we could have one more, and you didn't get it. So they knew they were going to pay for it last year, and they definitely knew they were going to pay for it this okay. year. Okay, perfect. Yeah, they've advertised that. Getting ready to open. Yeah, yeah, well, they filled it up. The only, like I said, the only exception we make is filling it from the hydrant. It, I mean, I, I think it would take probably two weeks filling it with a garden hose filling it with the hydrant, we can get it done a lot quicker and like I said, we're still gonna bill them for it. So. Any problems with us doing that with the with the tower down? Is it oh I should have asked that question. That was on my list. Um, tower. Is it still down for Southeast Tower is still down. The painting is finished. Um, it's it's completely done. So it should come back online this week. Uh, but filling that does not didn't it didn't matter at all. Okay. And it all comes off the booster. So it's basically using Beechwood Trails two towers. Uh, we were able to keep up on the low pressure side here. So perfect. No issues. Okay. Well, it's good to hear it's done. I didn't yeah. know it was done, so I was a little worried that we were out of, well, that we may have a tower down and we're trying to do that large right. fill. Right. So, um, yeah. But, no, it's, it's completely done. Actually, you can, uh, they replaced the letters. We've got it sky blue like all the other towers now instead of white like it was. Um, you can read it from Creek Road all the way out to uh, Water Plant 2 at Refugee and Watkins. You can see it. Um, so, it's, it, it looks really, really nice. It's nice and shiny. Comes on back online in a week. Uh, by the end of this week, we'll have that one. Yeah. So Headley Mills Tower by itself on the low pressure side was actually functioning really well. Uh, we just had increased run times at the plant to fill it because it's a smaller tower. So. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Any other questions from the committee? All right. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second, Jack. Walbert. Yes. Yes. Yes.